people have often asked me, when they look out of an aeroplane windows, what's that little sticky up bit on the end of the wing for? Well, I'm not going to answer that. I'm going to ask, ask the man, Mr. Winglets himself, to tell us exactly what a winglet does and what you did to create them in the first place. Well, thank you for asking the question. We, uh, you know, we started in the winglet business back in 1991 on the Gulfstream 2 uh, with a blended winglet. And it was a very interesting because we had seen some rudimentary winglets, but we really thought that they weren't shaped or sized properly. So what we did is we took a Gulfstream 2 and we measured its performance, and then we built some fiberglass winglets, very large ones, fitted them on the airplane, flew the fl test flying and measured the delta. When we did that, we got a 7.3% drag reduction. And what was interesting about it is it was fa fascinating for the range it gave the airplane, but it gave the airplane such a new appearance that everybody thought they got a new airplane. So that was the start of it. So more range or more fuel reduction? More range, fuel reduction, and a new look. So now when we're looking at innovation, you're coming up with some new ideas, and Boeing has uh, an aircraft on display at the moment. They're demonstrator for BBJs, and that is a most unusual-looking winglet. Tell us about that one. Well, we call those the split scimitar winglets. What that does is it gives them another 2.5% drag reduction. And we found that through experiment and doing computational fluid dynamics and test flying them, uh, same way by measuring the delta, that we got this increased experience, and once again, nobody believed it would work. So looking forward, what's the next disruptive technology we're going to find in the winglet market? Well, I'm glad you asked. We have a new technology. We partnered with a company called Flexus. And Flexus is uh, out of Michigan, and they've designed wing morphing surfaces. So we look at that in three areas of new technology. One is from the standpoint of load alleviation. You'll be able to add wingspan or winglets without adding major structure to the wing because of the load alleviation. Number two is what we call mission adaptive profile, where you take the wing or the trailing edge of the wing and you change the shape in flight. That will give another one and a half to two percent. And the third area we find that's very exciting, and we're just experimenting with it now, is in uh, de-icing, where we can morph the leading edge and pop the ice off rather than have boots. So you'd be able to, for example, like on a King Air, you would be able to use an aluminum surface instead of a boot just by torquing the leading edge. And when will we see that coming to market? Well, we're hoping to have a pro we were hoping to be quicker, but it takes longer. The biggest challenge is material technology. And with some of the new materials like glare and some of these in carbon graphite we're looking at, we think we will have some sort of prototype flying within the year.